Good evening. Well, it's hot outside, and it should be hot on the inside. <laughs> As we ask the Lord to fire us up for Him, to set us on fire, to rekindle our flame. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to sing about that too. The song goes like this. I am so tired of compromising. I am so tired of lukewarm living. So here I am with arms wide open. Lord, here I am. My heart's wide open. Set me on fire. Set me on fire. Set me on fire. Set me on fire. I am so tired. I am so tired of compromising. I am so tired of lukewarm living. So here I am with arms wide open. Hearts wide open, set me on fire, set me on fire, set me on fire, set me on fire. Take this heart of mine, wish your love inside. So Lord, set me on fire Set me on fire Set me on fire Set me on fire Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to worship. We to gather again in God's name here in this place. And yes, it's about setting us on fire today. The, the theme of the sermon is kindling. So we'll hear about that a little more a little bit later. I'm getting a little bit of feedback, too. We can work on hopefully tweaking that some. Also, there we go. Beautiful. Right now, ongoing is our back-to-school bash out in the backyard. You may have seen some kids and youth playing. I know when my kids got here, we were over 30 at that point, so it's already, a, and the kids are having a great time, so a great success for that, so we're thankful for them being here, too. There were some scouts who were involved, some people from the community as well as our church, and that's what we'd hoped for, so we are looking forward to that being a, a great rest of the evening tonight. They'll be here until 8. And also tomorrow, we do have Sunday school. It just started last week for the first time. So if you want to come at 945 to Sunday school, we'll have various different classes for adults and for children. And there's an, also a new member class. So if you know of anyone or if you or someone thinking about joining Holy Trinity, definitely come and be a part of that class. That one's in the upper room this time, also 945. Also, we wish our peace and comfort to this need family. And it's great to see Skip again tonight. We just had the memorial service for Janine here on the 11th, just this past Thursday, a couple days ago. So it's great to see you again here too, Skip, and welcome back to worship with us here on Saturday. Let's see, we have one more thing to do as well this night, and you're seeing those before you. We have had some beautiful women and men of the church and also of other churches in the community too that help to make our quilts and these quilts go out to people across the world we really don't know exactly where they might end up uh, but this has been happening for years and years and um, our lutheran church throughout the world does a great job of distributing these quilts to places where there's been disasters 
uh, any number of, of reasons people have been displaced. It could be war-torn areas, natural disasters, any number of possibilities. And it's just um, it's a source of comfort. It's a, it's a reminder that there are brothers and sisters in Christ that, that care for these children of God, wherever they may be. So I'd like to invite you to join me in laying hands on a quilt near you. And if you don't have one near you, if you might just rise up for a moment, which will be our next song, I Will Rise, just after this. <laughs> If you will rise up and find the quilt to be able to lay hands on, and I may go around some too. We're going to bless these through the weekend, and it seemed to make sense to me. We're Holy Trinity, so tonight we'll bless these in the name of the Father. And in early service, it'll be in the name of the Son, and for 11 o'clock in the name of the Holy Spirit to have a Holy Trinity blessing for these quilts. Let us pray. Lord God, bless these quilts. Bless the hands and the hearts who have made them. And we pray that in ways that we don't even see now or understand now, but trusting in faith, that we know that where they go, your spirit goes with them. So we pray that your spirit rests in these quilts. And just as they will wrap around the people, the children of God that most need them, may your spirit also wrap around them to touch them, to hold them, to let them know that they are loved, that they are cared for, that they are precious in your sight. In the name of you, Heavenly Father, we pray and we give thanks. Amen. We continue with our call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. There's a peace I've come to know Though my heart and flesh may fail There's an anchor for my soul I can say it is well Jesus has overcome And the grave is overwhelmed The victory is one he is risen from the dead and i will rise when he calls my name no more sorrow no more pain i will rise on eagle's wings before my god fall on There's a day that's drawing near When this darkness breaks to light And the shadows disappear And my faith shall be my eyes Jesus has overcome And the grave is overwhelmed Victory is won is risen from the dead and I will rise when he calls my name no more sorrow no more pain I will rise on eagle's wings for my God fall on my knees and rise I will When he calls my name, no more 
sorrow, no more pain. I will rise on eagle's wings before my God. Fall on my knees and rise. I will rise. I will rise. Father, thank you. Thank you tonight that we're gathered in, in the name of Jesus to worship, to give you praise, to honor you, to be in your presence, and to participate, Lord, in, in your life, your death, burial, and resurrection. To you be the glory in Christ's name. Amen. We continue with our confession to God and before one another. God of mercy and love. Forgive us for turning away from you, for putting other things first in our lives, for the things we've done and the things we've left undone, for not loving you with all our hearts or our neighbors as ourselves. Heal us, forgive us, and strengthen us to walk in the light of your love again. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light that no darkness can overcome. In his name, receive the good news that you and all who turn back to God are forgiven, blessed, and renewed to live and love again. Amen. The world will tell us, sometimes people around us will speak things into our lives that just aren't who God says we are. I have decided many, many years ago that I'm going to listen to the report of the Lord and not the report of the world. I'm going to trust what He says and not what the world tells me. Who am I that the highest King would welcome me? I was lost, but He brought me in. Oh, His love for me. Oh, His love for me who the sun sets free who is free and deep I'm a child of God yes I am free at last he has ransomed me his grace runs deep while I was a slave to sin, Jesus rescued me. Yes, He died for me. Who the sun sets free, who is free and deep. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. And who you say I am? You are for me, not against me. Say I am, I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. What I am, who you say I am. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free. I'm a child of God Yes, I am In my Father's house There's a place for me I'm a child of God Yes, I am I'm a child of God 
is from Luke chapter 12, verses 49 to 56. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism which is to be baptized, and what stress I am under until is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the world? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided. Three against two, two against three, they will be divided. Father against son, son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, mother-in-law against my daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it's going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there'll be a scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? And thus ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Kindling. Kindling is that stuff you set aside before that campfire, if you're going camping, the little bits you put together to try to get that fire going and to keep it going. So if you have good kindling, you can add fuel to the fire later and it'll stay going. You can just put log upon log because you've got this great, great fire started. If any of you have ever done any primitive camping, you know that if you get out there and it's pretty damp, it can be hard to get that fire started, even with good kindling. And sometimes in those ultra-dry situations, it can just start up just like that. Maybe so much so you need to make sure to contain it and have a really good fire pit and dig around to make sure there's just dirt nearby so it can't spread. Well, as a teenager in middle school, I found out how easy a fire can start. Sometimes it's pretty easy. We were on this uh, backyard camping trip with some friends of mine and I, and one of, the, one of the friends, it was his mom and dad's backyard. And so we were there in the neighborhood, had a tent set up, and a few of us just wandering around the neighborhood at night as we were there. We just thought it was the best thing. And we came across this plant in one of the other people's property, <clears throat> and I guess you might call it ornamental grass. And it had grown really tall, and it had those shoots that are kind of like, you know, puff balls coming out of it. And some of my friends thought <clears throat> it'd be a good idea to maybe break one or two off and, and make it like a sparkler, you know, for fireworks. Just light it up and just go around like this in the night and just see how that went. And, and it didn't go too well, but they wanted each one of us to try it. But I felt kind of bad for the plant, and I didn't really want to break off one of the things from it. So I just put the lighter kind of near the edge of it, kind of only half-heartedly even doing that and just hoping it wouldn't even light. And I guess if it lit, I'd break it off then. But thankfully, it didn't light, and I just said, you know, it's, it's just not going to light. And so we just went from there. And looking back on it, I think one or two other guys might have tried doing that too, but I'm not sure. But I know that I did. And we walked down the street to do something else for a while. And then one of them said, look, look back, the whole bush is on fire. And we looked back, and the whole thing is just blazing up in the night sky. So as you know, any responsible young men of that age would do, we ran off in terror, right? <laughs> and figured we would not tell anyone about it. So I was an unintentional fire starter. <laughs> with all that, I guess. Is, is Jesus a fire starter today? We definitely wouldn't think of him that way, but remember what he said, right? That he came to bring fire and how he wished it were already kindled. And he goes on to say, I have a baptism with which to be baptized. And oh, what great stress I am under until it is completed. And do you think I've come to bring peace? No, I tell you, but division. And it just goes on from there. 
And as I was looking over this text, which is the text assigned for today, I was saying, no, Jesus, say it isn't so, and I don't want to preach this. I wanted to look at another text instead, maybe for the day. But then I thought, maybe that's all the more reason to look at it and, and to preach it. So here is the text for today. My guess is, with all the fires of, of looting and riots, who here is looking for more fire, and who here is looking for more division right now? I'm sure not. So this was the last thing that I thought I wanted to hear. But what is Jesus talking about with all of this? I mean, it certainly seems that he is the cause of this fire and the cause of this division. He says so himself. From now on, five in each household will be divided, two against three, three against two, father against son, mother against daughter, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law. It sounds so causative that Jesus is doing this. And yet, if we listen back to it again, it does say, from now on, these households will be this way. And if you notice the way it's said too, mother against daughter, father against son, Jesus isn't in the middle of any of those family dynamics. It's not Jesus causing mother to be against daughter. It is the mother against the daughter. So it seems actually perhaps more of a natural outcome. It is indicative of the reality of what will be. And why? Why will it be that way, and why is Jesus sure, then, that this fire will cause all this division? And I think when we look at Jesus bringing in the kingdom, which he was called to do with the Father, and with God, the Father, going all the way for us, even to sacrifice his own son, we remember that God asks the very same of us, for us to be all in for God. It comes back to that very first commandment, to have no other gods before me. God's not calling us to be second or fourth or eleventh. and None of those are good enough for God. I think the reality of this is that God's Son knows that we are called to put Him first and follow Him, that some will say yes and their lives will be transformed and changed. And some others will say no. And many of those will be from the very same households. And that will be a source of division and great pain for so many of us who are not willing to put God first above our own addictions or our own quest for power or greed or money or whatever it is, our own narcissism that is running so rampant today as well, or any other false gods that we might get hooked into and caught into instead of the Lord, our God. This, I believe, is that cause of the division. And if we look further at Jesus, too, we realize that even though he's bluntly saying, and I wish it were already kindled, and I wish it were already completed, like he's just going for it, there's a different reason why. Listen again what he says, and imagine... Jesus also being completely divine, so being divine, he knows. He knows what is happening. He knows what will happen, but also at the same time completely human. And with all the vulnerabilities, with all the frailty of being human, and the wanting and desiring for love and a relationship and connection and peace. And listen again. I have a baptism with which to be baptized and what great stress I am under until it is completed. This is why we also know this same Lord who is bringing fire and that will cause the vision and will cause all this separation is still yet that same loving Lord. He just knows ahead of time what will be because of this. Because of calling us to put God first, just as God has put for, first put us first, it will cause division. It will be a source of fire for the world. When we look at this gospel, too, we also look at some of the things that perhaps we can do. A lot of times in Lutheran sermons, you'll hear about grace and God's grace and how that good news comes. And it's in here too. And we'll talk about how that fire is perhaps some grace as well. But we also have our response as humans. That's part of the relationship. 
what we are called to do to respond. And you see Jesus' frustration with the lack of response then and, of course, perhaps also now, too, in so many ways. He says, you know, when you see this cloud in the west going, you know it's going to rain. When you, when you see this wind coming from the south, you know there's going to be scorching heat. Why? Why don't you see the, and, and, and why haven't you discerned the present time and what's happening? And then, that's the end of today's gospel. But if you look just one more verse, in verse 57, Jesus goes on to say, and why don't you judge for yourselves what is right? Imagine what's going on today with all the craziness of the divisions, with the craziness of the narratives and all the groups going against other groups and all these things that have been new language and everything else created that is causing all kinds of division. And perhaps in a lot of this, we do know better. And why don't you judge for yourselves what is right? Why don't you suggest that you can, that we can? And perhaps it is time to stand up and have a little more common sense again and to bring the children of God back together and that even with things that might seem well-intended, if you can see nothing but further division and separation from that, how can that be from God, the one who reaches out to everyone, the young and the old, the rich and the poor, the insiders, the outsiders, to bring all God's children together? And maybe that's part of what this fire does too, a refining fire, a purifying fire. Yes, fire is scary. And yes, it can cause pain and death. Our Lord knows all about death. But it's amazing the new life it can bring. It's amazing when you have these huge wildfires like we had in Yellowstone a while back in all these different places, and, and you had all these ecologists and other scientists saying, oh, it's going to take generations for this to come back to be the way it was before. And so much sooner than anybody thought, there's new life and new growth. And it's amazing. And yes, even when a little middle schooler thought, oh my gosh, I burned down this whole bush. This is going to be the end of me. And everybody else was saying, yeah, it was Mark that did it. And everyone in that neighborhood went ahead and prejudged us little kids that we had done and nobody assumed anything other, even though it was true. <laughs> and so that very next morning, I was kind of half escorted and half decided to do it myself too. I went over and because I didn't know the person and I went to the house and knocked on the door to apologize. And the father of the house came to the door and obviously he had already talked to my friend's mom and a bunch of other people in the neighborhood by then. I think it's a really close-knit little neighborhood there. <laughs> so he already knew the whole story before I even started. Um, but I came to tell him that I was sorry, and I was coming to tell him that I would pay for it or work to do whatever I could to, to restore it. And he said, oh, it's okay. He said, I was getting close to cutting it down anyway. You cut it down each year all the way to the ground. He said, you actually saved me some time and did me a favor. And for the next few years, you know, I didn't really even buy that. I mean, I thanked him graciously for that. But then, yeah, some of these grasses and other things, when they are burned down, they come back, and they come back so beautifully. And I don't know if that particular one really did come back or not, but he did say he cuts it all the way to the ground, and he said, it'll be fine, don't worry about it. And he gave me a gift of grace. Isn't that what our Lord does with us too? And I believe in faith that also comes with this refining, purifying fire. Yes, it may seem scary up front, but I think we're at a time where we need some weeds that have been choking to be burned off. We have some things that aren't healthy that are overgrown. So yes, Lord, kindle in our hearts this refining fire. Kindle it in our households. Kindle it in our communities, in our churches, in our country, and in our world. We need your fire. We need the fire of your Spirit's love.
kindle it, that we might go beyond all those choking weeds that have led us away from knowing even the common sense ways of how to judge for ourselves what is even right. And perhaps with the grace of your spirit and that renewing and new life fire, we might again begin to see the forest for the trees and begin to judge for ourselves yet again with the kindling of your Holy Spirit in our hearts what truly is right and to receive that refining and receive that grace. So thank you, Lord. Thank you for sending fire to the earth, fire that restores, fire that brings much needed new life. Kindle it in our hearts today. Amen. Let us stand together as we are able to praise God's name in song. Let me be as gold and precious silver, purify my heart. Let me be as gold, pure gold, refiner's fire, my heart's one desire. apart for you my master ready to do your will purify my heart cleanse me from within and make me holy purify my heart me from my sin deep within refiner's fire my heart's one desire is to be holy, set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be holy, set apart for you, my master, ready to do your will, ready to do your will. I'm ready to do your prayer. We continue now sharing our faith with one voice together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the one holy church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of God's peace together. Peace be with you. God's peace. Peace be with you. God's peace. God's peace. Peace be with you. God's peace be with you. Peace be with you. God's peace. Peace be with you. God's peace, peace be with you. You may be seated. And for those of us joining us online, you can also join in our offering through our website. It's uh, 
Holy Trinity's website is htelcm.org. There are various ways that you can give there, and so you can look at the website for that. And for those of us, of course, in person, and for all of us, we just give thanks and praise that we have blessings from God. All that we are and all that we have is from God. So in thanks and praise, we give back a portion of what God has first given us. We receive our tithes and offerings. In the night in which she was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us always together to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Everyone who seeks Christ is welcome to the table of the Lord. The meal is ready. Come, let us eat together. Our ushers will invite you forward.
Father, thank you. Our hearts are full because of your love in us and your joy and your peace and your freedom and your grace and your fire. Thank you for the purity of your spirit and your word. Thank you for all that you do in us, through us, around us, and with us. You are truly God to be praised. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. As we leave this place tonight, we ask God that you give us your strength and your wisdom and your grace and your guidance and your direction for our lives. Because without you, we have nothing. But with you, we have everything. To you be the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations.